Yeah, my guy, uh, Bert from Scrap, uh, I guess he thinks that I sold, or at least he thought that I sold the tools that he gave me as a gift. And I'm like, dude, that, that's like a... That's like touching the third rail, you know what I mean? You, you never, uh... You never sell or give away gifts that were given to you, I mean, unless you're like some sort of like famous celebrity and you just can't, you know, you, you can't use all the swag that people just send your way. I, I, I understand that, you know, they end up donating the gifts that they get from a lot of people. I got about that much brass. Not really a lot. Take this thing clean. Yeah, no. Bert from Scrap Farm gave me a whole bunch of uh, battery powered tools. Like, if I was to sell stuff like this, like, what would I get for it anyway? You know what I mean? Not like you're gonna get like $100 a piece. You, you couldn't get, you couldn't get the amount of money for selling something like that as what it's worth to me, to you, is to like, I don't know, for scrapping. So I sell a tool like this for like 10 or $15, like, come on, come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> For real? There's no way. Yeah, this, this roof is like really leaky. I don't know why. That little puddle going on out there. Again. I guess, you know, like when I used the sawzall to cut the, cut that electric motor, and it completely, like, all the wiring, it, like, completely, like, tore apart in a million different directions. What we got here? Well, we could brass this up a little bit. You probably brass that up a little bit. I'm all out of transformers pretty much.
state of some matter. Can you imagine? That would be like that would be like stuff that exists but does not exist. That would be like the ultimate uh, alchemy. You could take some material and turn it into gold, and then it would turn into nothing. <coughs> Quantum nature. See, that's the kind of stuff that fascinates me. Instead of people telling me the same repetitive stuff over and over again. Close the door! Open the door! Use a screwdriver! Star Trek stuff going on there. are actually operating in that area. I actually think the Argonne National Laboratory is actually uh, doubles as a dragnet to uh, spy on the spies. Think about that. really working on is developing some sort of technology that is at least a hundred years into the future like technically speaking even though it's here and now it's so advanced that it's a hundred years into the future that could one day be used to eliminate the Russian threat not eliminate the Russians, but completely eliminate the threat. I think that's why, you know, the United States has never really moved on, on Russia, because I think that, yeah, military industrial conflicts, I, I don't think that they're sure enough of the technology that we have right now that it can work so flawlessly. If you think about it, the Russian threat is mostly driven by billionaire oligarchs, sort of like a gangster society. Is that brassy in there? I mean, it's... it's a, Clear and out in the open of the way that they're the way that they're going at like trying to destroy Ukraine. I'm gonna scrape this up a bit. There's not really a lot of power in this shed. I don't know, it looks brassy. Uh, don't really want to put too much more time into quality refining of this material if it's not going to bring about a greater profit. Yeah, no, I'm, dude's like, oh, uh, you probably sold off the. The tools that I gave you, I'm like, okay, I don't think so. Well, because, you know, I went and mangled that, uh, electric motor there. How much longer can the United 
think stay ahead of China because if you think about it, China has, they have billions of people. So each person, each person is a potential brain. They can be taught and to work on some sort of a project. So brain power wise, if you were to amass all the power, brain power that China has, it's much greater than here. And it's a definite threat. I gotta cut that right there. Should I use the, the sawzall or just try and pinch it with the clipper? I think I'll just pinch it with the clipper because it's fast, right? There. There's a little piece of copper stuck on there, but we're gonna just give it to the brass gods. I guess we could throw that on the floor over by the other piece of scrap. Help me unwind all this wire here. It's stuck to this tray, right? No, I don't think so. Oh, how many days till Christmas? Toyland. a little bit of copper recovery. I don't know if the scale would actually register that. It's rough not having a whole bunch of uh, transformers laying around. This feels heavy enough to be brass. This part looks like it might be aluminum though. China and Russia are working on something to counter that. Right? Uh, I don't know. Well, it looks kind of yellowish. That looks, that's because the shirt that I'm wearing. It's orange, I think it's reflecting off of it. Depending on which way you look at it, see how brassy that looks? I turn the camera like that. Look at that. What is up with natural white there, King Louis? Alright, we'll do that. It just that it felt heavy. that 
I have this. I know this for sure is brass because I already turned in some of the lamp. This is all that's left of the lamp. I have this thing as brass. This water meter. I wonder if they have stuff like this in, in Great Britain. If they do, somebody like Ian Matthews would be <laughs> an expert in ripping that apart. I've done a few of them, but I always end up resorting to the hammer. And uh, this stainless steel thing is like a like a bucket in there, and it's like nearly impossible to get out. For like a total of like two or three pounds of brass at a dollar seventy five a pound. Ugh. We got that right there. Let's take a you can take that apart with a hammer. Take it out a bit. bits of lead solder on there, which add weight, and uh, just, a few scrap yards discriminate against it, but some other scrap yards, they just take it the way it is, so we will sell to them, except uh, most scrap yards won't ignore the fact that that piece of steel is on the back. And with that, I'll conclude this video. And uh, I guess I'll see you in the next one. If I can come up with more. Oh, there's a piece of brass attached to plastic. That could be too hard to take apart, right? I was going to put it in the vise. That's good. That's all five already. There. And it's not revisionist history. It's history history, but it's always a new take on existing history. There's a, I don't know, about six ounces of brass. Apparently, we'll add it to the pile. Get closer to 20. <laughs> Alright, kids. And fans. That's my only fan. So there's a new one.